Hi, in today's video I want to play around with the prime numbers in Commodore BASIC but I don't want to generate prime numbers or print them on the screen because that's kind of boring but I, what I want to do instead is the plot the prime numbers well, not the numbers itself but the position where the prime number occurs in some sequence so as you all know the prime numbers are natural numbers that are that are only divisible by one and by themselves without remainder uh, so i choose the sequence of number from one to one thousand we're going to loop through each of them and check if the number is prime or it's not prime or okay uh, other words it's composite so uh, conveniently I choose this uh, 1000 because uh, there is exactly 1000 character that fits on Commodore 64 screen so by the time that our program ends we should have the whole screen um, completely covered in uh, graphic which will show us which positions are prime numbers and which are the composite numbers okay so this is our code it's very small not much to it so let me um, go line by line and, and explain it a little bit more in detail so line number 10 just clear the screen nothing special there line number 20 this is our main for loop which iterates from 1 up to 1000 like I mentioned before and then we are at line number 30 where we define this variable L as the square root of n so this is the way how we um, speed things up because um, in order to determine whether our number n is actually a prime number, we need to find all his divisors. Uh, and we don't, we don't need to check um, every number from number 2 up to number n. It's enough to check from number 2 up to variable l, all square root of n. And this is good enough to determine whether our number is prime number or, or it's composite. So this is why it, this variable is used for. And then we have this variable f, uh, which I use for color. And at the moment, um, we define it as a zero, uh, which is a black color. Okay, and then line number 40 is if statement. So if our number is um, less or equal to number two, then we are again um, define this variable f as zero and we are jumping at line 80 so this is this covers just two cases uh, in case that our number is one or it's two in both of these cases we are not going to line number 50 60 and 70 which is our main iteration we we know that number one is not prime and number two is prime number so it doesn't make sense so we are just skipping both of them for the moment uh, and then um, line 50 60 and 70 is our for loop um, that iterates through through all numbers and try to find the divisor for our number n in case um, this if statement is activated it's true then our number is uh, not the prime number because we uh, um, found his divisor one of his divisors and then we just define this variable f as zero again and we are jumping at line 100. In case our number is actually prime this for loop goes through all these numbers from 2 up to l and this if statement is never activated we are um, then at line number 80 and we can be certain that at this point uh, our number is prime number and then we have this if statement which actually just checks uh, whether our number is one or any other number and if you remember at this line 80 we also jumped from line 40 where we have two cases n, n is one or it's two so in case that n is one um, nothing will happen our variable f will, will remain zero in case that we have number two or any other number that uh, did go through this for loop and didn't um, activate this if statement uh, we define variable f as seven that means color yellow and this is our prime number and then at line 100 and 110 uh, we are just poking position on the screen uh, and we are poking the color 
Now for the character I choose, for Petsky character I choose 160 which is shifted uh, space. This give us a uh, you know, nice little box or square, whatever you want to call it. And it actually fills the complete screen um, nicely. And then line number 120 is just next for our main uh, for loop here. Um, and that's that's about it. Okay, and then we have this line number 140, which is not part of any calculation. This is just um, endless loop. Um, the reason why I got this here is once we complete our plot and we fill the complete screen, um, Commodore 64 screen with our with our graphics, um, we don't want to end the program and then this ready prompt appears on the screen. We just want to hang there and have our plot nicely visible on the on the screen so that's that's the reason why i got this here yeah let's uh run this uh program and see what do we get okay as you see um the prime numbers or position where the prime number occurs is um, plotted yellow and uh, all the composite uh, number or composite positions where composite number appears is painted black. So by the end of the, our program, we should have a um, black yellow image showing us quite an interesting distribution of the prime numbers. And I believe that you can all already see um, some distinguished patterns that are, are appearing on the screen. Yeah, but we need to be a little bit more patient because this is slow and we will get even slower. Okay, it's not done completely, but you can clearly see that we have some groups of um, prime numbers uh, if you look at the columns and you can see there are group by four uh, column spaced exactly by one position uh, inside that group and each group is um, at exactly three positions distance from one or another which is quite interesting um, distribution of prime numbers and quite interesting way how you can look at the prime numbers but we can make this a little bit more interesting just give me a second let's at least list list our program one more time and what we are going to do is add more color to it so i will define variable c as a color and because um, the composite numbers or the numbers that are not prime numbers are defined by the black color, which is zero. And all the rest, uh, all the prime numbers will be in some other color. So we need to start from one, not zero. And here at line 80, instead of just um, color seven, we are going to have define a variable f as color, um, as variable c. And c will be incremented of course so that each column will have its own color but because we have um, 40 columns uh, we don't have that many uh, colors in Commodore 64 but we will loop 10 by 10 colors so it will be good enough so where are we we are at one, line 115 before the next yes and we will increment the color for each column and we are going to check if our color is greater than 10 then we need to start from the beginning at beginning is the c equals 1. okay let's list the program now okay that's that's looking good let's run it hey here we go we have some color okay Again, black color is composite numbers. Uh, all the other colors are the prime numbers. But what we are going to, what we are trying to achieve that each column has its own color. So it will be much more clear to see 
um, how this distribution is actually behaving. So yeah, let's let's wait a little bit more. Yeah, here we go. And we are done. Okay, now you can say clearly for each column how it actually behaves. And you can clearly notice this upper left corner where we have our prime number 2, and then prime number 3, and then prime number 5. Now, number 2 is the only prime number in this column, and this also goes for number 5. For every other column, wherever, wherever we have a prime, we have more than one prime, except for number 2 and number 5, which are the only numbers in this sequence up to 1000, okay? They are only numbers in this column, which is quite interesting to, to see, to visualize. For columns that don't have primes at all, they don't have it. Every other column that have at least one prime number in it, it has more than one prime number, except number two and number five. Yeah, quite interesting. So this is all that I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this little um, prime number bit art plotting <laughs> kind of thing. And you know I like this stuff. So yeah, um, until next time, goodbye. Yeah, let's do it again. Mm-hmm.